great stuff. So today, as we were saying outside, is Palm Sunday. It's the start of Holy Week when Jesus went into Jerusalem. The crowds gathered and there was much cheering and exultation, but that all changed by the end of the week and the cheers turned to jeers. So this week, we'll be moving through the events of Holy Week every night here at uh, St. John's. So at 8 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll walk through the story of Holy Week together. And I invite you to come on pilgrimage with us starting today and entering into the Holy Week as we gather together at 8 o'clock each night um, to think about the story. But it all starts with Palm Sunday. So let's watch the screens together. Jesus, so if you can today join in the words that are in bold white font, I'll read the words in green. The Lord be with you. Humble and riding on a donkey, acclaimed by crowds and caroled by children, moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power. You are giving the beast of burden. You are giving majesty. You are giving those who long for redemption. So with them, with heart and voice, we shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So let's sing out our praises. The crowds on that first Palm Sunday worship the King. And uh, our first song declares that our hearts desire is to worship him also. Let's sing this thoughtfully together. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you.
strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Amen. Let's take our seats, and if you can grab hold of your palm cross, we'll need those. We're going to have two times of prayer today, first time with our palm crosses, and then later after the talk, we'll broaden our prayers out a little. Uh, Margaret, thanks for arranging these for us. So, first of all, we're going to wave our palm crosses as a branch as we thank God for his creation. So thank you, Lord, for this wonderful planet, for the sea, the sky, the plants, and the animals. Creator God, help us to look after your creation. Okay, we're going to hold our little palm crosses like a sword. Some of you are holding the blades, great. We pray for all those who are caught up in conflict and war today. Jesus, Prince of Peace, help us to be peace bringers too. And then lastly, if you curl your fingers round the cross and hold it close to your, your heart like this, that's it. We're going to pray for all those that are lonely, those we know who are worried today, those we know who are unwell. Holy Spirit, Jesus called you the comforter. Help us to bring comfort to those around us too. Amen. These things are wonderful, and I see a lot of them up in people's homes, which is great. But if you've already got it up in your room or in your house somewhere, why not bring it home and use those prayers as just a way of praying uh, as families on your own? Just use those three things to pray for the world. So let's do that. All right, we're going to stand and sing together again. We're going to pick up on those words that we sung outside. So you should be used to this song by now. But now we've got the whole band singing it. So let's really belt it out. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's stand and sing together. Yes. 
triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. A triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. A peace in heaven and glory in the highest when mouths stay close, the storms will cry. stay standing. Uh, children's time for you to go out to your groups. So if you're creche age, if you're preschool age, there's a creche out this door. And if you're primary school age, there's Sunday school out here. It's lovely to have some children visiting with us today. You're so, so welcome. And you can join in if you want. I'm hearing about Sudoku puzzles here, which is fantastic, but I'll look at it later, Patrick. So if... Um, as our kids go out, we're going to declare what we believe using the words on the screen. We believe in the God who is the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. We hope in our Creator who is faithful to all that is seen and unseen. We trust in the Messiah who was crucified, died, and was buried. We believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of faith and formation. We trust in the breath of life who stirs, sustains, and sanctifies. We hope in our advocate who brings to us and through us the gift of God's peace just declare that we trust in the breath of life who stirs, sustains, and sanctifies. As we remain standing, we're going to use this next song to open ourselves to the Lord whose spirit is with us in the here and now. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Let's sing together. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Faith is seen. 
the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked. The crowds answered, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. This is the word of the Lord. Try that again. My name is Simon, or should I say Peter? I'm still getting used to my new name. You see, I've been following this rabbi called Jesus for about three years, and one day he told me that my name, my new name, was going to be Peter. It means rock, so I quite like it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I better start at the beginning. As I'm sure you know, me and my brother Andrew were fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. We took over the boat when our dad got too old for it. It was hard work. You had to get up early, very early, and there were always nets to be mended. But it's a living, and we just about got by. My wife and I weren't ever going to be rich, especially with Herod taxing us on behalf of his Roman mates. But we had a roof over our heads. It all changed that fateful day when I met Jesus. It was thanks to my brother Andrew, really. He'd been spending his spare time listening to this preacher out in the wilderness called John. John kept telling people that they needed to turn away from evil and turn back to God. I didn't go. You see, I knew what the real problem was. The real problem was the Romans who occupy our land. They install puppet leaders like Herod who grow fat on our taxes and they take the wealth from our country while we have to live on the breadline. I thought it's the Romans who are the real problem. Repent all you want, but until we get rid of the Romans, it's not going to change anything. I thought it's nice that John's sermons are giving Andrew some distraction, but I knew better. And I knew some other people who agreed with me about the Romans, but then they went too far with it. They thought we should actually get a bunch of weapons and defeat the Romans. Well, easier said than done. Have you ever seen a Roman legion? What chance would even a thousand of us have in our cloaks with our daggers have against an enemy like that? <laughs> We'd be massacred. No, no. I understood why they entertained while well, they, they had thoughts of defeating the Romans, but I knew better than that too. Really, the only hope we have is the Messiah. You know, the, the future king that's promised in the scriptures. Everyone knows that the Messiah is going to bring in a new kingdom where the people will worship the true God, not those fake gods that the Romans worship, and he will bring in an era of freedom and peace. There's this one place in Isaiah where the prophet talks about the Messiah. It says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, 
establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And as I grew up, I heard talk of the Messiah most Sabbaths when our father took us to the synagogue and, and I believed it, you know. I mean, I did, but, well, it's been so many centuries since those prophecies were written and nothing's happened. I mean, it would be great if it happened, you know, but to, but to be honest, I didn't really think it would. But then there was that day when Andrew came back from listening to John preach and he came to me and he said, Simon, Simon, we found the Messiah. And my first thought was, oh no, Andrew's really getting too deep into this. Now John is the Messiah. But Andrew said, no, 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 it's not John. It's this other guy, a teacher called Jesus. He said that John himself had pointed Jesus out and called him the Lamb of God. And then John told his followers that it was in preparation for this guy that he had been preaching in the first place. And he urged his followers to go and follow Jesus instead. So Andrew wanted me to come and meet Jesus too. Well, at first I thought, no, I'm, I'm too busy. Maybe another time. But when I looked at him again, there was this look in his eye that was different from what I'd seen before. There was an intensity in them. I could tell this wasn't just excitement. I know my brother. Something had clearly happened which had impacted him profoundly. So I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe I should go and meet this Jesus. So I did. I went back with Andrew and he introduced me to Jesus. And you know what he said to me? He told me that from now on, like I said, my name would be Peter the Rock. And then he asked me to follow him. Now, I'd literally just met the guy. But only the creme de la creme get to follow a rabbi. So I said, yes. <laughs> Maybe I was too impulsive. I can be a bit like that sometimes, but, but I did. And that was three years ago. And I have not looked back. What a three years it has been. I can't really describe what Jesus is like. He's, he's kind, but, but not in a pushover sort of way. He he chooses his words carefully, but at the same time, he, he tells it like it is. He knows the scripture inside out, but he doesn't quote it at you in the sort of arrogant way that the Pharisees do. He pays attention to the people that we generally miss, you know, the sick, the old, the poor. And while he's always on the move, he always seems to have time for people. The way he keeps bumping into people right at their moment of greatest need is uncanny. And the way he seems to know what people are thinking, you'd think that would be scary, but it's not. It's more like, like freedom. It's like someone finally putting into words what you'd always thought, but didn't know how to say. And in everything, it's the same message. Turn to God. The kingdom of God is coming soon. And the way he talks about God, too, it's different. You know, you've all heard the Pharisees praying on the street corners. They use big jargon words, and they talk about how much better they are than the rest of us. But not Jesus. He talks about God as if he's just had lunch with him. But, but not, not in a flippant way. It, like I said, it's hard to describe. But the most incredible bit has been the miracles. And when I say miracles, I don't mean like tricks, I mean actual mind-blowing miracles. I wish I had the time to tell you about them all. Like, just after I met Jesus, he took us to this wedding, and he turned about 150 gallons of well water into wine. I kid you not. None of us knew what to make of that, but it was enough to me to think, oh, maybe this guy really is the Messiah, or at least a prophet. Only a prophet could do something like that. But after that came the healings, and it was healing, after healing, after healing, healing in abundance. And it went on like that for months. We would travel around, Jesus would heal and heal, and at the same time, he would tell people that the kingdom of God was near, and that people should turn back to God, and it was exciting. I was convinced, 
And one day, Jesus actually asked me who I thought he was, and I just straight out said it. I said, you are the Messiah. And he told me that I was blessed for knowing this. He also said something much stranger. He said that on me, he would build a community of believers. I'm still not quite sure what that means. But as the months went by, me and some of the other guys, we start, well, we started to get a bit impatient. I mean, all the healing and preaching was fantastic, but what about the Romans? You know, when is Jesus actually going to set up his kingdom? When are we going to get to the action? When is he going to go to the ground zero of Roman rule, Jerusalem, and actually kick the Romans out and take his place on the throne of David? When was this going to happen? And then it did, a few days ago. Jesus announced we were going to Jerusalem at last, and we'd be there for the Passover. I thought it was sensible of Jesus to time the trip for the feast, you know, because it meant a lot of good people would be there too, you know, not just the Jewish leaders. Loads of devout people from the countryside would be there to celebrate the feast. And they knew Jesus. They also thought he was the Messiah, and they were expecting him to make his move. So we thought, this is it. This is the moment that Isaiah was writing about all those years ago. The kingdom of God is finally going to come. The Romans are going to be kicked out. We will be free, finally. Well, we reached Jerusalem yesterday morning. When we got close, Jesus sent a couple of the others to go and get a donkey. At first, I was confused by that because when a king enters a city to take the throne, he usually rides a stallion. Donkey isn't very king-like, but... But then I remembered something I'd learned in the synagogue years before. The prophet, the prophet Zechariah did say that the Messiah would arrive on a donkey. If my memory serves me, it says, see your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. So we thought, okay, let, let's run with the donkey thing. The important thing was that, we were, that he was coming to take the throne. And while we were waiting for the guys with the donkey to come back, word got out that Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem. It went round the crowd like wildfire and spread into the city. There was such excitement. People flocked onto the streets. Some of them were there out of curiosity. Some were there to find out whether it was true or not. But there were loads of people there who had heard Jesus and seen his healings, and they had no doubt who he was. As we saddled the donkey and Jesus got on, we could see them spreading their cloaks out on the road as a gesture of honor. They were, they were shouting, they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Some of them even climbed up and cut palm branches and started waving them. Now, that was a seriously risky thing to do. Everybody knows that a palm branch is a symbol of Jewish nationalism, and the Romans certainly know that. So anyone waving a pram branch would at the very least run the risk of being arrested, but they did it anyway. We followed along behind Jesus as the donkey walked over the cloaks. He was clearly heading for the temple. We didn't really know what to do other than follow him, but it didn't matter because we were all so excited. We knew Jesus's power. We'd seen it. We'd seen him calm a storm with a word. We'd seen him turn that water into wine. We'd even seen him raise the dead. At any moment, he would command the Romans to leave, and they would have to. Well, eventually, he got to the temple. Jesus got off the temple and headed in. This was it. This was the moment we were all waiting for. At any moment, Jesus would make his proclamation and usher in the kingdom of God. Except it didn't, didn't happen like that. Jesus went into the temple courts and found the people who change money and sell the pigeons for the sacrifices. You know the ones, they've been there for years. You know they're ripping you off, but you have to pay them anyway because you have no choice. Well, Jesus went up to one of them and flipped his table over. Coins rolled everywhere. There were cries of indignation. And at first people just stood around stunned. Some people came over to help and I think one or two might have pocketed a coin or two. And then Jesus goes and knocks over a second table, and he's angry. I've only seen Jesus angry the very odd time, but you could see it on his face. Something was really upsetting him. He shouted, it's written, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of robbers. Everybody was watching. 
temple guards came over and tried to calm everyone down. And Jesus did stop turning over the tables. He'd made his point, I suppose. And then he started to teach the crowd. It was the same message as always. The kingdom of God is near. Repent, turn back to God. And then we left. And we went back out of the city to Mary and Martha's place for the night. It wasn't what I'd been expecting at all. In that moment, it felt like such an anticlimax. We thought today was going to be the day when Jesus would bring in the kingdom of God, and he didn't. And I was worried about the crowd. This crowd thought he was the Messiah. What do they think now? The Romans are still in power today, just as they were yesterday. Are they disappointed? Are they angry? It wouldn't be hard to persuade a crowd like that to turn against Jesus. So here I am trying to make sense of what happened yesterday. Now, based on what I've seen and heard, I know Jesus is the Messiah. But Jesus isn't fitting into the mold of Messiah I expected. A conquering hero, someone who will overthrow the Romans and establish a new kingdom. So, well, what, what do I know? Well, first, he came in humility, riding on a donkey, not as a conqueror. So, that suggests that in his kingdom, it's humility, not power, that matters. Secondly, he went to the temple and he openly challenged the religious leaders. So that suggests that the way we're approaching God now has to change. And thirdly, the more I think back over all the talks he's given, the more I remember, the more I remember how much he talks about a kingdom that is not limited by boundaries. He's always saying the kingdom of God is near, and I've always assumed that he meant it was about to arrive, but what if he meant something different? What if the kingdom of God isn't a kingdom with, like, borders, but is something entirely different that isn't limited in that way? Like when he told me he would build a community of believers on me, what if the kingdom of God is more like that? Maybe the kingdom of God is going to be organic, made up of believers, believers empowered by God, believers who can transcend politics and even borders. Maybe the kingdom of God is going to be something alive that can grow in all directions across the world. It would mean the kingdom of God would be something far greater, far more subversive, and far more powerful than a human kingdom. That would be incredible. So, maybe I shouldn't be disappointed after all. If anything, I should be disappointed in myself for thinking that Jesus would be like another human king ruling over a kingdom. You know, Jesus has done unexpected things every day for the last three years. So really, I ought to have seen this coming. <laughs> I've been blind. How typical of Jesus to take my greatest hopes and come up with something even better. And you know, I get the feeling that this is something that people are going to wrestle with for years to come. This world is full of suffering and pain. We all have our own thoughts about what goes on in the world, and we all have our own opinions about what God should do about it. But Jesus has shown me that God works at a different level altogether. He's not just, well, he's not just smarter than us, he works in a completely different league. He already knows what the world needs, and he's bringing it about. If we really genuinely put our hopes and our fears into his hands and trust him with them, then he will come through with even greater things than we could imagine. But will people choose to do that? I'm sure people in the years to come will hear the stories about Jesus. They might even believe that it all happened, but will they trust Jesus enough to surrender their future into his hand? And I mean really surrender their future into his hands? From what I've seen, he will not always do what we expect or even what we understand, but he is faithful, he is good, and over these past three years, he's shown me that he is worthy of our trust. So in the end, I believe that those who put their trust in him will find that he is indeed the one in whom all our hopes 
and all our fears are ultimately fulfilled. Jesus says we're going to be in Jerusalem for a few days yet, certainly long enough to celebrate Passover. I wonder what other unexpected things he has in store for us. I can't wait to find out. Uh, Simon Peter, uh, thank you for bringing us very imaginatively into the heart of that story. Well, the question I want us all to think about is Peter's revelation of who Jesus is grew and developed as we heard in that story. I wonder what you understand of this Jesus. I wonder if you've got that place where you realize that he's Lord and that he's someone that you can really trust with your life. We're going to sing about that now as we think about uh, this story and how we respond to this Christ. So let's stand and let's sing this song together. If you don't know it, you'll quickly pick it up. Let's stand and sing together. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do, but do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do, but do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. all creation groaning it is it is a new creation coming it is it is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is it is a good that we remind ourselves of this it is. is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave. His name is Rune and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of them? Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah 
who conquered the grave. And his name is Rune and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and child, every nation and tongue. And he is saving people and raised the nation and land and the sun. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Of all blessing and honor and glory. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? turn to in prayer. Let's sit together. We're going to pray for different aspects of our world, of our country, for ourselves, but with this hope and faith because we know the one that we're praying to. So let's pray together. King Jesus, as we remember your journey into Jerusalem, we pray that you will come and reign in these situations. First of all, we pray for our world for people who are scared of the future, and for all who have lost homes or health or hope. King Jesus, come and reign. We pray for the church and for the journey of faith that we walk together. Help us to trust you and to serve other people as you have called us. King Jesus, come and reign. We pray for our country, for members of our government, those in Stormont also, for those in leadership positions in our community, business leaders, education leaders, social leaders. Would you give them wisdom as they lead? King Jesus, come and reign. We pray for people who we know who are anxious or lonely or unwell, especially those in our own families, those in our circle of friends. Let's pray, King Jesus, come and reign. been thinking about this morning how our eyes need to be opened as to who this Jesus was and is. And so lastly, we pray for ourselves. King Jesus, come and reign.
bring our prayers to a close using the words on the screen, King Jesus. King Jesus, you are our past, present, and future. Walk with us always. Come and reign in and through us. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for our closing song together. For we remember that the Christ who came into Jerusalem that day will be the one who comes again. Uh, so let's stand and sing this part of our faith, part of our hope, how I long to breathe the air of heaven. Let's stand and sing together.
Amen. Thanks, Van. Let's take our wee seats for a moment. Uh, a few notices to share. Uh, today we are collecting, we're going to quarterly do this, but today we're collecting some of the urgent goods that the baby bank needs. If you forgot today, because if you're like me, you do that sometimes, then sure, you can bring it next week. But if we could bring it by next week, please, uh, and then there'll be this every quarter where we as a church support the baby bank. So if you've got stuff, leave it at the back of church if you haven't already left it in the halls earlier. As I was saying, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Every night this week, there'll be services here in the church at 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock, do come along and walk with us through this special week. Uh, Jerry, Reverend Jerry Gimpel is speaking short talks. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's communion on Thursday. And there's a tenebrae service, which is a way of reenacting the story of um, Good Friday. Um, that's going to be on Good Friday. Everything at 8 o'clock, do join us. Also this week, there's a special communion service Wednesday morning, um, a Holy Week communion service, and there's prime timers on Thursday afternoon. So if you're over 60, then you can go to prime timers, or if you want to sneak in, I'm sure they wouldn't say no. And this week, uh, we're going to be watching a movie, Mamma Mia, so you'll be singing Abba songs together, great stuff. Mamma Mia movie, tea, coffee, biscuits and cake, bit of fun. That's two o'clock in the Kennedy Rooms uh, this Thursday. And then the, the week ends um, on Easter Sunday with three services. There'll be Holy Communion out the front of church outside at 6.30. There'll be uh, two services at 10 and 11.30 where we'll really celebrate that Jesus is alive. I believe the ladies had a good wee breakfast yesterday. Yep. Uh, over in Dundonald. Well, there's another Bells event. You guys are so social. Um, Bells afternoon on Saturday, the 6th of April, 2 o'clock in the Kennedy Rooms. It's uh, uh, Two people will be sharing a wee bit about their jobs. And also there's the request that you bring a baby photo along uh, for a wee bit of fun between yourselves. Please do make sure somebody photographs those little photos so that we can have wider fun, please make sure that they are uh, recorded for posterity. Well, that's Saturday the 6th of April, 2 p.m. And then the next day we have our Easter General Vestry. We'll be meeting a combined service at 11 and we'll go straight in at the end of that. Well, not straight in, there'll be a short break and then into our AGM, our Easter General Vestry. Uh, Please do put that in your diary and plan to come to the service and then to stay on um, children's uh, children. Children will have a film, probably Veggie Tales, in the Duffin Room, so there will be something for them during that time that uh, we'll be meeting, and it will be a short meeting, unless it will be a short meeting. Uh, very last couple of notices. We've got a special Caring for God's creation service on April the 21st at 11. Our eco team will be bringing updates and encouraging us all to do our part. Um, And that will have a specific advocacy focus, so we're going to be inviting various uh, politicians and stuff along, and it's to encourage them to be taking steps at that level and for us to know how we can encourage that to happen. So that's Sunday, April the 21st, 11 a.m., followed by a light lunch. And then last but not least, um, on the 5th of May, There is a marathon, and that means that our roads are closed, which means that we have to have one combined service at 11.30. The roads open at 11, so we're going to have one combined service at 11.30. Hey, folks, just wait there and wave your wee things. Those are class. Wave your wee doofers. Those are brilliant. Unbelievable. Wish we'd had those for our wee parade. Awesome. Anyway, so uh, May the 5th, 11.30, you're going to wave your... Show everybody what you've done. That's incredible, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Marvelous. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. That was great. Lovely job. You're going to bring those home, put them in your room? Maybe. Let's stand together. We're going to finish by declaring the psalm that we declared outside as we close together. Let's stand. 
been really lovely to see some visitors with us today. Um, there's coffees and teas that have been specifically arranged because we've got a, a shorter service so that we can have some time together. So don't rush away. Why don't you go to the back, have a coffee, tea, biscuit, have a chat with other folk. Not sure if the donkey's outside still, but you can go and see him as well if he is. He is apparently. Great. She is. She is. Let's uh, declare this psalm together. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. And all who fear God say, His love endures forever. That's your bit. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the house. I've really confused you now, haven't I? I'll do the with the Lord on our side. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can humankind do? Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. So as we pray together, let's use these words as we honor. As we honor Jesus as King, may our praising hearts and obedient lives bring Him glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Lovely to see you. If you would like prayer for anything, there'll be prayer just over to your left in front of the pulpit if you'd like to receive prayer. Remember to have coffees and teas. And the donkey is outside, so all good.